This is Bishop Gregory Brewer's homily, October 17, 2013, at the Episcopal Diocese of Central Florida, Orlando. It's interesting, today we give thanks for the life of Ignatius of Antioch, someone who wrote in a time that was concurrent with the writing of the later New Testament authors, so we're talking about 97 AD, into the early part of the second century. We are talking about someone who knew personally some of the later apostles, uh, second bishop of Antioch. So when we read Ignatius' letters, we are really falling within the realm of the writing of the, writing, the book of Hebrews and things like that in the New Testament. And in many ways, they take up some of the similar challenges. And that is the challenge of what it means to be a faithful Christian in a time when being a faithful Christian would cost you your life, which is why we have in the collect today the sense of, and these are Ignatius' own words, he thought about his own martyrdom, knowing that he was going to be taken from Syria to Rome to be thrown to the wild beasts, that he would be chewed up and it would be like grain, wow. as a bread offering to God. I, I've been thinking about that for really two reasons. First of all, because we live in a time of Christian martyrdom, where mm -hmm. Christians across the planet are, in fact, being the cost of their lives is being exacted from them because of their commitments to Christ. I also think about it because in some ways one of the things that even though that's an out there reality, the in here reality is the challenge for us that to follow Christ means in fact being willing to lay down our lives. Not in a hypothetical sense, like if you were called upon one day, would you be willing to do this? Uh, I think many of us would probably say yes, although, you know, you never know how you're going to act in a situation. <laughs> right? um, but instead, I think the laying down of our life is something that Jesus asks of us in terms of sacrifice for the sake of getting out the good news. In other words, for the sake of mission. I think this is a part of what Jesus means when he says, whoever serves me must follow me, meaning living that same life of self-sacrifice. And where I am, there will my servant be also. In other words, where I'm active in the world, that's where my people are going to be. And whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Here's what I mean by that. There is still very much within our own mindset the sense that if I give my life to Christ, what that does for me is it blesses me financially, it protects me from harm, it gives me a greater level of personal physical safety, uh, it causes me to be better at what I do and who I am. And that's, you know, about maybe that much of that is true to what the gospel teaches. In fact, the gospel teaches something very different. That it is the call of the baptized to give their lives away. And at great personal risk. They, the scripture doesn't take seriously our need for personal safety at all. Mm -hmm. um, and the only way we can enter into that kind of self-sacrifice is to know in a deep personal way, and I think this is where it begins, Ask God, asking God to get at the fear that we all wrestle with around being rejected, being in places of difficulty, losing out if we give too much away, the need to protect that is inherent in what it means to be human. I mean, we all have it, we all live with it. And that God would somehow supplant that with the promise that's given in Paul's epistle to the Romans that nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's the line in the collect, the line in the collect in the prayer book, fearing no loss except the loss of thee, gets at that in another way. To say, the one thing I want you to work in me more than anything else 
is the commitment and the invitation to serve you no matter what the price. Knowing Jesus' promise that where I am, my servant will be also. That's a very different way of thinking about how many of us think about the Christian life. But it is deeply true to the meaning of the New Testament. Even yesterday at clergy conference, our uh, speaker was really taking us back to the early church fathers, which is one of the reasons I wanted to bring up Ignatius today. And he was at one point quite critical of the right in the prayer book of baptism. And somebody came up to me late, later and said, do you agree with that? I said, well, actually, I do. Well, well how would you change it? And I, you know, that's, that's too big an answer. Uh, but I said, here's one thing I would certainly do. The assumption of the New Testament is to be baptized, is to be baptized into Jesus' death. Meaning, we are invited to share with him in his death that we might also share with him in his resurrection. That's the teaching of the New Testament. And that, in part, means a commitment to martyrdom. Mm -hmm. A willingness to give up my life no matter what the cost might be. Or, or no matter what level that might be asked of me. That's not deep within our baptismal liturgy. And I would want to call that to our remembrance today in the life of one who gave his life so freely. And that's Ignatius. Ignatius assumed in the time in which he lived, that baptism more than likely, and more likely than not, meant physical martyrdom. Mm -hmm. We don't think about that much. Mm -hmm. But I would invite us to say, in the spirit of what is given in the New Testament, Lord, make me available to you in new ways, regardless of the personal cause and supplant the fear of loss that I have in my life with the deep, deep sense that nothing can separate me from your love. And therefore, the losses, when they come, not if, when they come, will be okay, because I know that I am and will be found 